What's up guys? So I just got to shoot a quick one. Had to come into the shop bright and early this morning. Uh, got a bunch of snow. Just wanted to show you guys this real quick. This is that, the great stuff I had to come into this morning and uh, meet the plow guy here, take care of the lot. But uh, just wanted to show you guys this stuff real quick. So this is what I get to come into. They were talking about 11 inches yesterday. I mean, it's still snowing now, but I can say a good three inches out there already. Plow guy pretty much left 20 minutes ago. I was out there doing the small detail work around the cars and all that stuff, and snow's already back on the, on the lot. You can see piles of it over there. Crazy stuff. But this is the great stuff I get to deal with. You guys living in those tropical climates, you don't know what you're missing. I mean, this is fun. Great snow day. Um, yeah, it probably brings in more business for, you know, the mechanics and, you know, brings in more work for us, things like that. Dead batteries, broken windshield motors, you know, I mean, uh, it also probably brings in more business for body shops too. People forget how to drive when it starts to snow, so it's dangerous to even drive to work in it. But... They're talking about snow for probably another three, four more hours, but I got to constantly be out there and, you know, salt to drive, make sure my customers don't slip and fall, things like that. When I go out there, if the customer's car is filled with snow, I get to knock all the snow off and fill up the lot with their snow on their car that they bring from their house. And then I got to take care of that at the end of the day. I had to take care of my house and take all the snow off my wife's van before I left the house this morning. So, you guys... You don't know what you're missing. You gotta, you gotta come up north. You gotta, you gotta get into this snow life. This is great stuff. So here's the shop floor before I start my day. You got a drain there. I got a drain over there by the sink. But you can see pretty much nice and dry. No hazards. No water anywhere. In any of the bays or on the floor. We'll show you guys this floor. After I pull in a couple cars, the amount of water that I got to deal with, especially if you don't get all the snow off the car outside before you pull it in, try to get as much as you can off of the car before you pull it in, even knock out the inner fenders, because if you don't, that snow ends up on top of you. And this is that heavy snow, the heart attack snow. It's all flooded over there. The parking lot pitches down. So it gets flooded over there. I gotta make sure I take care of that. I don't want that to freeze over. But quick snow day at the shop, guys. I'll be dealing with this all day. You know, it, leave me down in the comments what you guys think of the snow. If you live in a snow climate, you know, will you take it or leave it? You know, like I said, I don't mind the, the cold, but it's this snow that it kills me. Um, you know, it, between, between dealing with a lot, you know, dealing with paying the plow guy, you know, that's extra money I got to spend. You know, I don't have a plow truck of my own, you know, stuff like that. It, you know, it's a, it's a pain. It's a pain. But you guys let me know down in the comments if you guys live in, uh, if you guys deal with snow, you know, you know, how do you handle it? it you know, this stuff is, uh, you know, not, not that I'm like worked up over it, but it, it's just a drag. It's, it, it drags me down. You know, I don't, I don't like this stuff. You know, it's, my kids like it, but you know, they get a snow day from school. They get to play in the snow all day. And this is with the 275 60R20. 20, 60 275 60R20s. 60 and this is what we'll be putting on there. Some 285 6520s. A lot more aggressive, especially handle the snow. It's an all-terrain tire. Taking the air out of them. On these rubber valves, I just take the core out. But if they're the steel ones, I suggest just using one of these and just screwing in there and wait until all the air comes out.
Alright guys, so a couple quick tips on breaking down these tires. These got the, uh, the TPMS sensor in them, right here. So what I like to do is when I'm grabbing a hold of it, I just keep it away from the uh, press. So I'll break the bead on this side first. And then usually the front you don't have to, uh, to break. And then when you flip it, you just want to make sure the valve isn't in, isn't in front of the press. So when you're breaking it, I got it up here, so I'll break that one. Then we want to push the tire in, it doesn't knock into the sensor. So I got it at the top, I'll spin it down to the bottom here. Break this side. I always spend an extra uh, extra time on the back to make sure it's completely, so the bead is completely off. And you get it up on the tire machine. What I like to do with these TPMS sensors is start off, it's right here, start off with it by the duck bill here. That way, when you get the tool in there, you're getting the tire away from it. That way it's away from it and there's no chance the tire could come, come along and rip it off. I've seen it happen. Got the top one there. You can see the valves right here. What I'll do is I'll spin it around to the front. And then just lift up on the tire. That way it's up underneath the tire. Always check the rim, make sure there's no corrosion. These look pretty clean. I like to always just give it a once over. Make sure it's nice and clean. Get most of that corrosion off. Get your new tire. I always like to check to make sure they're not rotational. Um, if it's got the yellow dot, I'll usually mount it that side out. Um, these, I don't think, have them, so what I'll do is I'll write. What I'm going to do is mount them with the, uh, with the birth date out, the pro dates facing out. Get your soap. And then same thing, getting them on. What I like to do is keep the valve on the far end where the sensor is, right there. Keep it on the far end of the tire when I'm mounting it. So when it comes around, there's no chance for the tire to hit it. So that one, I'll wait till it comes across to here. No way for that, that lip to, to catch that sensor. There's a few different ways of doing it, but that's the fastest. That's the way I do it. Give the guy plastic chrome caps. These are chromey looking, but they're actually plastic, so they don't freeze on the metal. All right, guys, so there's a couple ways of setting these tires up to balance. Pretty much, you want to make sure all the old weights off of there. Pop the center cap out. Find the right cone for the machine. Do a static balance on these. Get them up on here. I like to get them on there first and then pull all the old weights off. Make sure it's centered and balanced. Use a little 
plastic one so you don't scratch the customer's rib. This one didn't have much weight on them. And then here's how you set the specs for the rim. This one gives you width. And then when you close it, there are sensors here in the door that read the rim size. And that'll automatically go on the screen and then it'll start spinning. There we go. And then you'll see here's the screen. When it stops, it'll tell you the weight it needs. We'll actually switch this because we're using the sticky weights. See what it ends up taking. These usually take a lot of weight. So we got half an ounce on the rim here and then four and a half ounces stuck to the inside. And then we use the sticky weights here. That's for the inside. So after you get the weights on there, this one took a lot of them. You can see right there. Usually with these bigger tires, when you do the upgrade, you're gonna be, end up putting a lot, of, a lot more weight on there. So I put them on there, close it, let it spin again. See where you're at, trying to get it down to zero or anywhere near, I'm usually pretty happy if it's point, you know, point 0.25, point 0.50, that's usually okay with me. See, that's pretty decent. You're pretty solid there. You ain't gonna feel that vibration, and that's pretty much where I got most of the tires. I think the highest one was a half an ounce, so that's pretty much how you do it. And then as far as this machine goes, you got the uh, F1 control for the rims, the spokes, no, really, it's more or less optional. And then you got your F2 static and all that stuff where you put the weights. Some rims obviously doesn't, don't have a lip on the front of it like these don't. And then uh, you got the F4 tire rated. That's your pretty much static balance and all that stuff. This guy's also changing out the lugs from the stock to the longer spline style, same thing, 14 millimeter, uh, one and a half thread pitch, I think 1.5 thread pitch. Yeah, 1.5 thread pitch. So we'll switch these out for him too. He's gonna keep all the old ones. That's the box that the lugs came in, part number. And then it comes with a key. So if you lose this, and no one has one, you'll have trouble getting it off. Plus it deters people from stealing your rims. So yeah guys, just shoot a quick one here, getting these tires on there, you know, quick modification on these trucks, you know, get a little bit of lift on them. He actually did the Bilstein uh, shocks on these things, so he's got a little bit better suspension on it. You know, you don't always got to go crazy with the four, five, six inch lifts. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, kind of do light mods without breaking the bank. You know, you got big looks from it, it definitely changes it drastically, it almost looks like a different truck with those tires on there now. You'll be able to handle this crazy snow in the area. You know, it's uh, better than spending a couple grand on a bunch of rims and everything else. I think the, the black lugs kind of accent the rim a little bit. You got that chrome and black look. Shut, Shut up, up and sit down. down.
So this is after one car, guys. You could see the amount of water that I got to squeegee out by the drains now. That's just one car dealing with this snow.